<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you so much for participating in this new online session of Plena Internacional. For those of you who are new and who don't know us, Plena Internacional is a project of Plena Inclusión, which this year we are doing in collaboration with Inclusion International, where we try to promote the participation of people with disabilities from all over the world. These sessions are a place in which to share experiences and learn about new issues, new topics. We have a schedule in which we have all the online sessions listed and also the master classes led by Inclusion International. Please remember also that there is interpretation in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. For the interpretation, you have to click on a little wor uh, world icon that is in the bottom of the screen. Then you choose the language in which you want to listen to. In this session, we are going to talk about personal assistance. For this, we count with the collaboration of Silvia La Fuente, who, guess what? She's part of the personal assistance leadership team, and she is an expert by experience. Hello, my name is Silvia. Thank you, Anna, for your presentation. I am from Leon, and I have a cerebral palsy and a physical disability. I am an independent person, but for occasional support, I also need a personal assistant. Although I try to do everything by myself. Everything that I can do, I do myself. And what I can't, I need a support. I take the reins of my life and I have the self-determination to make my own decisions. Any decision. This is why I am the leader of personal assistance in Castilla y León, which is a region in Spain. So now I want to introduce you to the team of personal assistance. We are a group of people with intellectual and development disabilities from all over Spain. We have been trained in independent living, personal assistance and leadership. We have meetings every month in which we plan what we're going to do. Some of us have already started to give talks on personal assistance. Uh, 
we are also having meetings with politicians and we support other people who don't know what independent living means so that they are informed we inform professionals and also families who still don't know about it we also meet and we get together to fly to fight and to claim our rights we fight for the equality of all people thank you so much silvia we are so happy to have you here with us today to share this session as in the in other sessions like in previous sessions we sent you a questionnaire so that you can tell us a little bit about personal assistance in different parts of the world i am so happy to see new faces here today they are, we received eight answers from different countries from brazil canada colombia spain mexico and south africa thank you everyone who has answered this if somebody hasn't done it already and you would like to we will send the link in the chat natalia is going to post it in the chat in this questionnaire the first question was whether we know what a personal assistant is and how can it help you and guess what the majority answered of course the all eight people answered yes that they do know what it is but silvia Tell me, Stephanie. Uh, yes, I will be translating for Stephanie. Just a second. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. But, Silvia, what do you think if we tell you a little bit about... Uh, okay. Uh, so, hi, I would just like to state that uh, I'm here with uh, Mari. She's my new uh, personal assistant. Uh, so, what do you think if we speak a little bit about the, what a personal assistant means? in case nobody has known or heard about it before. Yes, a personal assistant is someone that supports you, that helps you do things that you can't do by yourself. For example, if I can eat by myself, well, I do it myself. But if I can't, for example, do something, for example, cut a steak or do something particular, it is my PA that supports me. It doesn't do things for you. It just supports you in the things that you can't do by yourself. The personal assistant is a key, key support. It is a tool for independent living. If you follow 
Falhou a tradução, Independent peraí. living is the life that I have chosen for myself. And this is why this is my life project. Also, the personal assistant can help support people in uh, making decisions. And in the process of learning to make decisions. But be very careful. It never makes a decision for the person. Never, never. It is always the person who decides what he or she wants for his or her life. It is if, as if the personal assistant is somehow the hands and feet of someone that needs support. So thank you everyone Thank, thanks to these people also, we became much more empowered and we have much more presence in the community. This way we can also contribute much more. We can maybe have access to a job or study at university. We can travel. We can have or also our leisure time. Well, basically have a full life. Personal assistance allows for a fairer society, one that is equal to the rest of the citizenship. It empowers people with disabilities but also the elderly, children, and anyone with disabilities. And while I'm on the subject of empowering, when I'm now that I'm speaking about empowerment, I want to please Open the floor to my friends from the association Enable, which means empower. That who are joining us from Scotland. Come in, colleagues, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Mari. Uh, and I am a director employed at Enable, and I am here today with two very special people. Uh, so also on the call today is Holly, um, who is currently in the north of Scotland, and she is accompanied by her personal assistant, Amy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Holly and Amy, for being here today. <laughs> So I have, um, we were invited today to tell you a little bit about some of the work that we do here at Enable in Scotland. Uh, and I have a few slides that I'm going to share my screen and go through. And then we were hoping to have a bit of a discussion with Polly and Amy, um, who will share with you their experiences uh, Holly, uh, from being uh, an employer with her, who is in, in charge of her uh, care and support with her personal assistant, Amy. And Amy will share with you a little bit, perhaps, about her experience as a personal assistant here in Scotland. So if that's OK, I will just start sharing my screen now. Um, and feel free to just tell me if it works or doesn't work. So I, um, hold on.
Can you see that okay? Yeah, it works. Good, okay. So uh, thank you very much um, for having uh, having me along today. As I said, my name is Mary Galletley. I am the director for Enable Cares. Uh, we currently provide support across Scotland and the way in which we do that is through our Enable PA model. And our PA model is a human rights driven self-directed support in practice. So a little bit, um, just a little bit of background about us as an organisation. We are a very large organisation. Um, we are, um, Enable was a charity that was founded in 1954. And uh, the founders were a group of parents who wanted uh, better rights and opportunities for their sons and daughters. And at this point in time, Enable supports people, employers and communities across its three pillars of Enable Cares, Enable Works and Enable Communities. And we believe in an equal society where everyone has the right to live, to work, to participate as active and respected citizens in a community of their choice. As you can see on the first um, box here, Enable Cares um, is, is a very large social care organisation operating across Scotland. We currently operate across 27 local authority areas and we deliver a human rights driven, self-directed social care um, to uh, people living all across Scotland, over 1,000 individuals. Through our PA model, the people that we work for direct their care and support and ensure that it's designed and delivered and that those uh, personal assistants are employed by us as an organisation, but specifically to support each individual. So the PA model, what is that? Uh, the PA model is essentially the democratisation of a direct payments option here in Scotland. In Scotland, there are various ways in which you can choose to access your support. And the PA model is very much um, about giving choice and control to the individual who is receiving care and support. The PA model goes beyond being person-centred and is truly about delivering self-directed support in practice. I think it's important to recognise that there is a bit of a distinction between person-centred and self-directed. So person-centred is something that commissioners talk about in terms of placing agency on those bodies as the commissioner. However, self-directed, on the other hand, places the agency Uh, I'm just hearing somebody and I'm not sure if that's somebody's maybe not muted or if I discontinue. Sorry, just if you can speak a little bit uh, slower. Lower. A little bit slower, yes. please. Of course. So self-directed places agency on the individual. And the individual then is in control of the service that they receive. The Enable PA model is a human rights uh, approach, which is about self-directed care and support and making that a reality for anyone who chooses to have support from Enable. We do this by handling all aspects of the technical and administrative responsibilities of becoming an employer. So we are recruiting personal assistants who are contracted and employed by us, Enable, as the employer, but there's a third party element of the contract of employment, which means that our staff, our personal assistants, are contracted and employed to support a particular individual. What that means is that we very much from the outset recruit personal assistants to meet the needs of each of the individuals that we support. 
that means that we take into consideration the things that are really important to each of the individuals. That would include things like having shared interests, um, shared outlooks on life, uh, as well as having the necessary skills and experience. This model has been recognised um, across, um, across Europe. Uh, we recently received a European Association of Service Providers for Persons with Disabilities International Award for Innovation in Social Care. The PA model um, is essentially able to support the delivery of care and support that's consistent. So regardless of an individual, where they live, who they are, they can have self-directed care and support as a reality, regardless of how the, the funding or commissioning model is in place. The benefits of self-directed support are that it's available to everyone. And we have been able to demonstrate at Enable that our regulator is consistently inspecting us with very good or excellent ratings. We are also able to demonstrate, given the size and scale of our organisation, that it's transferable across different geographies and also different health and social care needs. I think that what would be really good now is just to perhaps um, have a bit of a chat with Holly and Amy a little bit about their experiences in terms of Enable's PA model um, and to take any questions that you might have from myself, Holly, and Amy. Thank you for all that you've explained, Mary. That's really mm -hmm. helpful about the background of Enable, isn't it? But Holly, it's, it's your turn, I think. Would you like to speak a little bit about how you find it, having a personal assistant, a team, of personal assistance, um, do you, why don't we tell the people? Because their experience is different. Yeah. Um. Well, the the PA PA is giving me the independence. They support me, but they do, but they promote in my independence. But sometimes I want to do it myself. And I think so, Holly. How long have you been supported by personal assistance at Enable? Seven years next year. Seven. Seven. Seven years, and you weren't always supported by Enable. No. Yeah. And we were chatting about that just before, uh, just earlier today, weren't we? Yes. So how does the Enable model, how is that different to your experiences before? The experiences before, um, I didn't have, I, did, I didn't, um, I had really options before. And then I moved on to Enable because I moved into my own house. Mm -hmm. I moved into my own, I moved into my own house, and then I was, and there was two providers, and I actually because I had settled at the time, um, I took it in for myself, I took it in for me, and um. They said, I would, and I came down and said, I'd rather have a neighbour Scotland working, doing my support with, for me. And then, then I had oh, five members at the time. 
Yep. And I think what we were talking about before is that the PA model allows you to choose the people that are providing your support. Whereas perhaps previously you've experienced providers uh, just recruit their workers and then send them to you. And the PA model means you're the person that's in control, isn't it? Yes. And um, again, I had to get, um, I like to be matched with the, pe with the people that I like working with. Yeah. And what would be the things that would be important to you from your personal assistance? What are the things that you look for and are important? I would, um, I would like the quality, what is, um, what are qualities to be, um, prom what promotes us to, to make the, the, not the client, the, the person we're supporting. The person that was supporting what they don't want to do in their lives, like a contract or some or like a contract or something. So you want to make sure that the person working with you yes. is open to the same kind of things yes. that you would like to do. Yes. So that you can do them together and have fun doing them. Yes. Like me. Like for example, for example, do I talk to the pipers? This is a um <laughs> a band that is Holly's favourite band, and there's a <laughs> concert coming up soon, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have you been to hear them play, Holly? Three times. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Three times that I've been to see them, and because we because we both enjoy music, we can enjoy doing those concerts, can't we? And the choir is out. So you've you've helped to choose people for your team, yes, based on the kind of person they are, and also the kind of interests they have, yes that might match the things that you're interested in. Yes. So you can keep doing those lovely things. Like the me my music like the I go to choir and I choose on a Tuesday or I go to circles and I Monday or Monday deep tag and a Monday and Friday not Monday Friday and obviously um and, and yeah and things like the activities like you know getting out walking you know, cooking and that promoted my cooking skills yeah you've had been learning how to do much more and i've been more interested in my gardening yeah. holly for for people that maybe won't know what circles are, so your personal assistants support you with all the things that you need help and support with. Yeah. But like we were saying earlier, you're able to say the things that you don't need help and support with too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's important that your personal assistants have the same interests as you, like music, like going to choir, like knitting, for example, craft because those are things that you enjoy and then you can enjoy doing with your personal assistant. Yes. But you also have support to go to work, don't you? Yes. <laughs> I mean, um, like the circle is an advocacy place that I really enjoy doing, which I really enjoy doing. Um, I've got a big job. I've not been able to do it this week. Of stuff. Um, but I've done a huge big job. You have a really important part to play in the advocacy um, organisation yes. circles, don't you? <laughs> Can you describe what kind of work you do? I know it's confidential work, but 
what kind of things are you doing when you're at work? Because I, I, del- I might deliver you there, <laughs> but then I leave you <laughs> to get on with your work. If do you want to tell everybody what kind of things you're doing when you're at work? I do. Um, I do like computer work, like um, like admin work, like putting emails out to the advocates or doing scanning pe- scanning important paperwork mm-hmm. and stuff. That's fantastic, Holly. You also help with training, don't you? Yeah. To to advocate for people that that have care and support, and to make sure that um people get it right for those individuals, don't you? Mm-hmm. And you, since the seven years that you've had support, then you've had um a team of personal assistants that you've chosen who helped you to move into your own home, and now live within your own home independently from your family haven't you yeah and i've been i've not been i've not had um sleepovers for so many years and i've managed to cope yeah with no uh, support at night time which is fantastic so that was built up over time wasn't it so actually you've been able to live more independently and reduce the level of support that you need in place because you've got the right support in and around you across the week. Yes. And there was another thing you were telling me about just before we came on today, which is also an important development in your life this year. (laughs) Jamie! Tell, tell them about Jamie. Tell them. Who's Jamie, Holly? Who's Jamie? <laughs> my, my partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> my partner in crime, which um, which I met through Terrible Quality Scotland. And you and Jamie are very fond of each other. Yes, I have met each other three times, four times. And how often do you speak to each other? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> <laughs> and and this t- and it's to do with the, um and you know that uh, everyone can find love. <laughs> is it out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is, and I think that that is. I think that when when you think about how far and and all the things you've achieved across the last seven years, it's quite amazing, really, isn't it? Yes. I think you should be very proud of everything you've achieved. I wonder if if um if anybody has any questions for us at all. Uh, Anna. Yes, I want to ask a question. What is the dominant model you were speaking about? The like mainstream model. Uh, the direct was that the direct payment. We in Scotland, um, the way in which we um, commission services um, comes in under a piece of legislation from Scottish government which is called self-directed support. So anybody that is entitled or needs to have social care support has um, options available to them under the legislation, which is called self-directed support. And in Scotland, there are four different ways of um, funding the support. 
it all comes from the government, but then there are different ways in which you can manage that. Option one is that you get the payments yourself, and that's called a direct payment, and you would become the employer, and you would have to go out and get in, insured to be an employer, and then recruit staff, train the staff, and look after the staff as an employer. That's option one. Option two is that you can have more control over the choice of where to access support, but that somebody else would manage the money on your behalf. And option three is when social, social work or social services manage everything and they make all the choice for you. Option four is a combination of those three options. Our PA model is something that we can provide regardless of it, each of those options. So if you have option one, two, three, or four, anybody who accesses or who is in need of social care can access the enable PA model. And that's why it's it's scalable and transferable and um, able to be accessed depending on any option within the legislation. I'm not sure if that actually answered your question. <laughs> Thank you so much. For me, it's a little bit complicated, but it's very, very interesting. Is there any other question? I think Sherry wants to ask something. Sherry? Mm -hmm. Sherry, have you got your hand up? Uh, yes. My my first um, question's answer is that the government in South Africa does provide some assistance, but they do not provide full personal assistance to individuals with disabilities or to their families. A personal assistant to assist us with our daily needs and responsibilities is something our country cannot afford. This is my answer for the first, for the first question. I I missed a bit of that. I'm not sure if I think Mari, I think she Sherry was saying that um in South Africa, I'm presuming Sherry comes from South Africa because that was lovely to hear her accent. But I think she was saying that it's something that the South African government can't really afford to do. Um, I've just come back from South Africa, pardon me, South Africa, and it's it's very obvious that people with disabilities um, are in a very difficult and different situation. Um, but I don't want to speak on behalf of Sherry. I, I, she'll have her very particular insights. But I think that's what she was saying that the government, they, well, for one reason or another, their their money isn't spent on disability. And I think that that probably, um, I think there's probably a number of different um, countries across across the globe that have very different approaches to social care at the moment um, and we are fortunate in Scotland that there has been some progression so the legislation that underpins social care in Scotland came into effect in 2014 so we're somewhat down the line in terms of trying to um, I, I guess really ensure the human rights of every citizen in Scotland but I think notwithstanding that, Scotland is not without its challenges as well. We are also facing huge pressures in social care across Scotland. And it's very challenging to recruit staff to work in the sector because the society perhaps doesn't value 
the workers as much as they should. So if I'm sure if Holly could and if I could, we would pay staff much more money in Scotland to work in social care because it's such an important job. But like you, Sherry, there is a there is a pot of money available and the pressure is on the government to make that money stretch as far as possible. And sometimes that means not everybody gets the support that they need. Thank you, Sherry. Were there any other questions? Uh, Laura? Fernanda from Mexico. Do you, did you want to say something? Well, hello. Good morning from Mexico. I just wanted to say my name is Fernanda Castro. I come from Mexico. And I just wanted to let you know that here in Mexico, if it is also something that is also important is to make your support cir circle bigger. And this is something we are working through the legal capacity also so that people with um, intellectual disability can take our own decisions also. We still have a long way to go but and to learn, but I, I want to say well done, Holly and Mary, for all you've been doing. I congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fernanda. Does anybody else have a question? Yes, I want to ask a question. Since when uh, is the, this figure of personal assistant working in Scotland? Because somebody said, I think Holly said that she's she's had a personal assistant for seven years. Is that so? Because in Spain, it's, it's only working in La Rioja, in a region, and they haven't started it, actually. So um, the, the legislation in Scotland came in in 2014. And that's when we enable developed our PA model. In Scotland, the option to become an employer yourself, option one, is something that's very difficult for people to do. So not many people do access support through SDS option one. And that's why we have developed our model, the PA model, so that regardless of how the support is funded, people can have a personal assistant that they choose. But not every social care provider in Scotland works like that. So as we were saying earlier, um, for example, I was saying to Holly earlier, I have a family member who has support. And when she was getting her support in place, she, she doesn't know the person that was coming to help her. She couldn't choose the person that was coming to help her. She didn't know if they had the same interests. And that's a very different experience then if you are living independently and you don't know the people that are coming in and out. It's a very different relationship and very different outcomes for you to achieve. And what Holly has described in terms of the support at Enable is that she has been in control of choosing who her team is. And in some parts, that's what's helped Holly in that transition into your own home, Holly, isn't it? For the last seven years, when Holly first moved in, she needed overnight support because she hadn't had uh, overnight support without somebody being there. But over time, her confidence has grown and she's been able to look, and look after her own home and she doesn't need to have people with her overnight, which is a huge achievement. Um, so... I'm not sure if, if there's anything further to add to that, Holly and Amy. I was just going to say as well, you, you really like having time on your own. And I do. Um, 
I know we're going to add that in. I do have some time. I do have quality time. And that's the time I can speak. That's the time I speak to Jamie. That's kind of like in between our shifts. So we, we work in the morning, don't we? We help you with your routine until after lunch. And then here we go. And then we clear off and we let you have peace and quiet for three or four hours. Yes. Yeah. And you, you're really glad of that, aren't you? You like us coming, but you like us going as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like to have the ability to be on my own and actually have my music allowed or whatever I do and have that scout time with Jamie and uh, <laughs> have that scout time with Jamie and because I don't want to. You don't want us listening I don't want to your conversation. My staff knowing <laughs> what we're saying. And sometimes you're studying, um, aren't you, in the afternoon? Sometimes you're you're working on courses. And my circle is giving me the opportunity to do a lot more, um, a lot more of my courses to do. And also on top of that, I've got Future Learn to do as well, which happens every second Tuesday. You're such a busy, <laughs> so yeah. busy soul. Yeah, I'm constantly on the go. <laughs> Holly, I was gonna say, how is that? How does that feel for you? You've got you know a certain number of hours of support, certain number of hours of peace and quiet to yourself. Yeah. Do you feel that balance? How do you feel about that balance? That um I. I like that balance. I like my time on my own. I like that ability to speak to Jamie in private and, mm -hmm. Your friend. and my friends and like the like the mum if what mum wants to come over mm -hmm. or some Yeah, you've got time that you can choose what you do. Yes. And if I would like to do my um, calling in or this or write letters to my grandpa, I can. Um, but I can do it in peace and quiet. Because <laughs> we're very annoying, aren't we? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> it gives me a time to think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did it? What to say? I think has somebody else got their hand up? Stephanie, hello. Ah, uh, hi. Ah, uh, hi. So here in Brazil, we don't have this personal assistant because the person with a disability, especially people with uh, an economic, uh, uh, a delicate economic situation. So here in Brazil, people who have personal assistants are rich people, and I've never seen a person with a, a learning uh, with a disability have a personal assistant. And people with disabilities, they receive benefit from the government. It's like a minimum wage. So this minimum wage can barely pay. Uh, a personal assistant for their own. So the, this money is only enough to pay rent and to eat. It's what you can do. So what we have here in Brazil is uh, like a caretaker, 
the more or less like an elderly person would have. So they shower, they help you eat, take it to the doctor. Um, but to do other things like paying your bills or, or, you know, go to the market or something. So we don't have that. So here in Brazil, we don't talk much about that. So sometimes the support comes from the family. Okay, so this, so the family supports, but for example, sometimes it, the family is just one mother. You don't have a dad or a brother or a sister, so the mom does everything. They take to the supermarket, to the doctor. So the mom has to do all of that. So here in Brazil, we don't, people don't talk much about that. We don't have a legislation. We would have to have a legislation, just like in Scotland. Um, so we would have to have some kind of partnership with the government, but we don't have that. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Alberto, you had a question? Yes. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Alberto from the Canary Islands. Here in Spain, we have the uh, legislation, the law of independence, but it, it is not being complied in most of the regions. I want to ask Mari, Mari Galetti, what did you have to do? What type of pressure did you have to do in order to manage this approval of the law in 2014? And how did the government and the associations manage to reach an agreement on this? So what did you have to do to, to reach this? I think um, that there had been a lot of work in Scotland uh, prior to 2014. Um, and I think a lot of that was about campaigning and lobbying with government to, um, to implement this legislation. Because uh, for, for many, many years, so when I was explaining the history of Enable, we, as a charity, started in 1954. In 1954, in Scotland, the rights and opportunities for people with disabilities were not good. We had institutions for people with learning disabilities who would live in hospitals. And then in the 90s, we started a hospital closure programme to help people to move into the community. And so we've been on a progressive journey for a very long time in Scotland. And the self-directed support was just the next part of that progression, but came from lobbying and campaigning at a government level. And that's something that we as Enable, we still do just now. We're continuing to campaign and lobby to try to always make the lives of everybody in Scotland better. And whether that is about people who are receiving social care, or whether that is about the employees that are delivering that social care, we are continuing to lobby with Scottish government to make things better for the people that are living in Scotland. I think that has been, you know, a very challenging and long time to get some of those changes in, in motion. And I think we've still got a way to go because like some of the other people on today's call, have shared with their own countries and experience. Our government is also under pressure to have more people needing support with less money available to provide that. So we have to continue on that journey to try and make things better. Um, and we've still got a way to go and we always probably will have. <laughs> I'm not sure if that answers the question, but I think that it's been a very progressive journey and I think we've still got a way to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. The Association ADEPAS also wanted to ask a question. I would just like to ask uh, if you can share this material with us, please. I think we could share our slides. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for to all our colleagues from Scotland. We really, really enjoyed the presentation. Now, what do you think if we, I can continue answering about uh, telling you about the answers of the questionnaire? Sylvia, do you want to let us know about the next question? We asked you if you knew anyone who has a personal assistant. And you have answered. Three people didn't know anyone who had a personal assistant. Another three people did know someone who had a personal assistant. And two people only knew a few people. So three people knew quite a few people and two people knew only a few. We also asked you if you knew of any type of support or help to in order to get a personal assistant. Three people didn't know about any type of help or support to have personal assistant. Four people knew different resources to be able to get a personal assistant, different, different supports. And one person knew a little, but not many. Now, Anna, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the other questions of the questionnaire? Yes, I'm going to tell you all about it, but hang on a second because I'm seeing that in the chat. Okay, I'll I'll speak about that later. We have asked them if they want to give us an example of help that you know, um, any type of example you know of helps with uh, personal assistance to which you answered that if you have an official recognition, there can be government support. In other places, such as the region of Asturias, it's like a service in a catalog. Some people told us that the government gives them some type of grants to have personal assistance. For example, in Brazil, you have a personal assistant only if you can afford one. Other people also answered that it is the family that helps them. They are the personal assistants. We have also asked what other, what new things were you able to do since you have a personal assistant in the case of people that have one. This is what you answered. You cook better. You are able to go to the bank and withdraw money, uh, socialize better, move around on my own, 
Also from Brazil, Stephanie told us that even though if she doesn't have a personal assistant, she has a person that supports her to participate in events, conferences, and different acts. Now, before I forget, Eilish, please. Um, oh, uh, she wrote in the chat. Thank you to all our speakers. Next week, we're going to organize a um, self-advocacy masterclass. We will sure to share your details soon. And next week, we'll have our great end of the year celebration, which I'm sorry I can't be there. Ah, I'm so sorry, but I'll try to be there for a little while at least. But also let me know if we want to be added to our self-advocacy email group where we share details on this meeting and of, uh, about other self-advocacy work. Those of you who want to join the group, you can see that in the chat, Eilish has left her email. Natalia, do you want to say something or should I continue? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So one little, one more thing. Does anybody want to tell us about the experience in your countries? Do you know people who have personal assistants? Yes, Jennifer. I have a person, I have a worker. She, um, uh, the government gives us money to hire a worker, and I choose the worker by myself. I choose, like, yes. And we go out, we do crafts, um, we go to movies, we do a lot of things together, and it's a lot of fun. Jennifer, which country are you in? I am in Canada. Ottawa, Canada. Okay. So, sorry, I should have said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It sounds like you have One more question. What new things have you been able to do since you have a personal assistant? Does anybody want to share? For example, I have this memory. I had a, someone that a support person with me and my I remi remember you might think it's strange, but for example, I didn't eat well. And this person helped me to cook. And the first thing that I did was make a Spanish omelette. And this has been a dream. I I always wanted to make a Spanish omelette. So it was a gra great accomplishment. Also Fernanda from Mexico. Fernanda, please. Yes, hello. Well, my support person, it is my family, but the first time that I was left alone at home, I had the support of someone that they helped me to cook, now that you were speaking about cooking. And for me, this was the capacity of being more independent. Obviously, I had supervision, but it really, really helped me so that when my mother wasn't home, I could learn how to cook something for myself. And then when my mom is here, she supervises and she she checks out that I don't burn myself, for example, but they also support me when I have to go to the bank, for example. They help me there 
my family helps me. And in one occasion, I went to the bank with a support person, but uh, it is always me that introduces the cards, the numero, the number, and this really helped me to be more independent. Thank you, thank you, Fernanda. I remember that we got together in a congress here in Spain, in Oviedo, in the north of Spain, and we had to bring like our biggest achievement. We had to share with everyone which was our biggest achievement. So everybody had uh, gone up a mountain, and I, I had done my Spanish omelette. That was my great achievement. Does anybody else want to share something? And the good thing about support per person is that, for example, in my case, at the beginning, they were support people and now they are my friends. They are really my friends. For me, there's the people that have most supported me in, when I need to share the, something with someone, it's my friends. Do you also get support from friends or do you get support from support people? My friend. Help. Help. Then, um, uh, maybe be kind. Holly, Holly helps in a, um, in a charity shop with her friends. And you have, do you want to tell about some of the things that you do when you work there? I, I, I try, um, I try to close uh, the mm -hmm. books. Uh, and yeah, and you, and you work together with your friends. Yes, you? we're, we work in a team. Yeah. <laughs> Good fun. Yes. Anna, also please, do you remember that the people that answered the questionnaire, do you remember what their answers were when they said the new things they were able to do since they had a support person? I thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I had forgotten about that. It is at the end. Sorry, yes, so you answered that you cook better, you go to the bank and you withdraw money, you're able to socialize better, you can move around on your own. And also from Brazil, Stephanie told us that even though she doesn't have a personal assistant, she has a supporter who helps her to participate in events, conferences and such. This is great. This is really great. And Anna, for example, when you participate in acts or when you have to travel to congresses in other countries, yes, I also have some uh, support person. For example, when I went to Geneva, my support person was yourself. It was you. And this person help, guides me, helps me to be more relaxed when I'm afraid of the plane, for example. And 
and when I need to orient myself in a city, even when I travel, sometimes I don't know where I am. I wake up and I don't know where I am. And you wake me up in the morning. And for example, you show me how I can ask things like a toothbrush, for example, even if I don't know the language or if I ask something in a bar. For example, when we went into the hotel, we didn't have toothbrushes. And in order to ask for the toothbrush, I said, please. And I did this gesture. And Natalia told me, you, you ask for it. And I did. I asked, for the, I asked for the toothbrush to the guy in the hotel. And how was it? Well, I asked him, please, please. Well, it was half English, half Spanish. I said, please, can you lend me a toothbrush? And I did like this. And they gave it to me. And then uh, when I wanted to pay for our bill, I did also this gesture I, and they understood me because you trusted me. So I did it. And this, this is something I really like. Of course, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I know, but I didn't know. And then you said, you made me do it. You forced me to do it, and then I had to find my way. And for example, when I was in the airport, you told me how I had to pick up all these uh, suitcase and all that, and how to arrive to the airport. You also translated for me. Yeah, that's a kind of informal support. Well, it's more informal, but it's formal. Yeah. It is not a figure as the personal assistant as such, as Enable was explaining, but it's a kind of support also. Yes, it is a support and for example, sometimes when I go and speak in public, I I take a photo of the clothes I'm going to wear and I send the photo to Natalia or to Carmen because I just dress up or whatever. And I just send them the, a photo of the clothes I'm going to wear and I ask them, is this adequate for this meeting or not? For example, This happened to me once. They didn't tell me what clothes I had to put on. And it was a very formal meeting. And I was there with my shorts and my t-shirt. And apparently that wasn't very appropriate. But I'm sure you did great. Yes, but if I had some support, and I, I would have shown them the shorts and the t-shirt, and they would say, eh, but where are you going? Where are you going dressing up like that? There is a comment in the chat from SPSD, which says, it would be important to know about the countries that have managed that their governments give some kind of economic support so that people can choose their own support and to be able to use this experience in our different countries. I think it is important to let everybody know that from all the different countries that answered the questionnaire, the survey that we sent, we are going to resume it in a very small document in which we are going to share all the answers from all the sessions, from all the questionnaires on all the topics that we have been working on in the different sessions. And we will send you this document to everyone, to everybody that has participated in the sessions. 
and I love so much to see new people. We are more people every day. Carolina, do you, did you want to speak? Yes, I have uh, this uh, survey. Do you send it by email? We send it by email. Yes, but also the people that is in the small group of the platform, we have. Uh, but do we have to answer it ourselves? How do we do it? Sorry, I got mixed up. Yeah, well, in the case of Spain, there is a group from the Plataforma. We get together and we answer it together. But what I'm saying that you you haven't sent it to all the emails of everybody that is in the meeting. Yes, yes, we did. We sent it by email to everybody that is connected to these sessions and also to this uh, email that Eilish said. It is an email group in which all the self advocacy people from other countries participate, all the self-advocates. But I haven't received any of this in my email. But if you want to participate, maybe you can put your email in the chat and Eilish will include you in this group. Carolina, sorry. In the platform, in the group of the platform, do you remember that we are a group? From the whole of the Confederation. I don't know if you remember that we also responded together as a group. Ah, yes, yes, okay, thank you. Yep. Ah, you're welcome. Anna, maybe people don't know what the platform is. Do you want to tell them? Okay, if you don't know about the platform, the platform is a group of representatives of Plena Inclusión. It is of people with disabilities in which we defend and speak about our rights. And we all get together every time fight for the rights and do different activities. Is that okay, Natalia? Yes. Silvia? Does anybody else have another question? If not, we invite you. Silvia, I pass the floor. I'm not sure if Silvia wants to speak. Does anybody have a question? Or do you want to tell us anything else about personal assistance? If not, we have arrived to the end of the session. We really hope that you have enjoyed the session. As, as much as we have. And please remember that next month, Inclusion International will give this masterclass on Thursday, 7th of December at 5 p.m. Spanish time. You can connect through the link we have sent you in the calendar. And something that we do every day is that if you don't mind, please put your camera on so that we can take a photo. Well, today, two photos, because we have more people than usual, so we don't fit in one single screen. 
this is incredible so that we can take a photo if you don't mind. First group. And now the next group. Thank you so much. I love to take two photos because we're so many. And see you soon, see you soon. Remember, December the 7th, and also after this year, we will have another session, which would be the last session, the like party. And we will, for all the new ones, it is always on a Thursday, not every Thursday, but on Thursdays and always at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Spanish time. It is always the last Thursday of the month at 5 p.m. Spanish time. But next month, because we have uh, the holidays, it was it is going to be on December 7 and December 14. And thank you so much for being here. I'm really, really grateful to all these new faces and also to the ones we already know, such as Alberto, Jose, Thank you, thank you so much. And Eilish, that I saw her in Spain, it's incredible. And now she's again in the screen. And so is Fernanda. Okay, so bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. See you soon.